a lot of uh, spinning wheels, but they've still been able to be successful. Well, in, in this game, I look at the kick, kicker, um, Alex and Dejas, because these are the types of games where special teams and turnovers really play a pivotal role in the game. And we are underway from downtown Phoenix. Our Keith Brown plays it off the net, has a hole up the middle, now cuts it back to the far side, has a man in his grasp, but still cuts forward almost to the 20-yard line, dragging a man on his back. And the Rattlers will have good field position to get things started with their quarterback, Nick Davila. And Davila this season dealt with some injury problems at the start of the year. He missed the first meeting between these two teams. The Rattlers took two of three from the Spokane Shock this season. And again, as we talked about at the top of the broadcast, he was roughed up a little bit the last time these two teams met. And he'll look to sure things up here on their home field in the first round of the playoffs. And he's back to throw. And on the first play, they try to do a design screen to the outside to Windsor, but it's incomplete. That's just a good call. I mean, they're having bump coverage there, not really off the ball. It almost seemed like the shot knew that that play was coming, almost like they, had, they, they read it. So a little bit orchestrated a little bit. Well, you know, sometimes by alignment you can give plays away. There'll be trips to the right of Davila on second and 10 from their own 18-yard line. Three-step drop. He's going to a little, little touch pass over the middle. Complete on the far side to chase Deadder across midfield, and that'll be enough for a Rattlers first down. See, I think this is where Nick Davila is really at his best in the short passing game. You give him the little short routes, you know, 5 to 15 yards where he can just one, two, three, bang, get the ball out of his hands. I think that's where he's really at his best, and I like seeing him just nickel and dime his way down the field rather than seeing him in a seven-step drop back or five-step drop back trying to go deep with the ball. It'll be trips to the right once again. They'll hand it off to Michael Benson. He had a great game last week. This Michael time Benson gets about five yards on the carry, but Michael Benson about four and a half yards per carry last week against Portland. And for the Arena League, four and a half yards per carry, that's going to make you as tough an offense to handle as it comes. Well, I mean, that to me is the balancer right there. Because if you can run the ball with any kind of efficiency, every once in a while you're ripping off, like right here, he just ripped off five yards. I mean, that's great to put your team in a second and five situation. You're going to air it out to the back of the end zone. Incomplete is Davila. Intended for Kerry Reed. It'll make it third down and five. Head coach, Kevin Guy. Kevin Guy has done an amazing job with the Rattlers. This is his 15th season in arena, in arena football, 11th as the general manager and head coach of the Rattlers. And over the past four years, the man has just dominated arena football, not just with what he's done from a coaching standpoint, but a personnel standpoint as well. Be two to the right, one to the left of Davila. Back to throw, and there's going to be a free play. It might have been someone offside. He's looking Windsor, but there's nothing there. But there is a flag down before that play got started. And we'll uh, go down to the field here. Referee Scott Campbell and his crew, umpire Roger Stewart, headlinesman Rod Amari, and line Illegal judge Andy Warner. Number 67 out of his stance. Five-yard penalty, still third down. He did not make the line to gain. So it's going to be third in about inches for the Rattlers here as they try to get into the uh, within the 10-yard line of the shock. Rattlers, very, sorry, go ahead. Very, very interesting yardage in arena football, third and short. What do you do? What do you run here? Do you, ah. And because, before they could do anything, to kind of solve your what do you do in this situation, Derek Dennis. Offense, five-yard penalty, still third down. I think you were going to see him run the ball, and Derek Dennis was a little excited about it. Well, you know, I think they feel more comfortable in this this situation, third and five, than they do in third and, third and short, believe it or not. There's a little extra room. Remember, in the Arena Football League, there's not 10 yards in the back of the end zone to work with. It's more like six or seven, maybe a little bit more like seven, but still not a lot of room, so if anything, it gives them more space. Davila steps into the pocket. He's going to get a little touch and look in the back of the end zone as Kerry Reed. It's incomplete. 
This a little bit over his head. And that's going to make it fourth down. See, these are the types of games where, you know, you, you look at players and you, you ask yourself, is he settled? Is he calm when he's throwing the ball? I mean, that's two balls on deep corner routes where he had the guy wide open. He just basically overthrew him a little, little bit, you know. Is he a little hyped? Is he a little too hyped, you know, trying to settle into the game? You know, would love to see him in that situation try to pick up a first down, get the five, six yards for the first down rather than going for the end zone. Back to throw Davila. He's hit as he throws, and that's a live ball. Chase Deadder will recover it, though, at the 15-yard line. But either way, that is a turnover on downs for the Arizona Rattlers. And the Spokane Shock will take over on offense first and 10, getting a stop on defense. Get a turnover on their first defensive possession of the game. Well, I made light of it at the, at the beginning of the game, just wondering, you know, the nerves, you know, chasing a fourth straight championship. How would that factor into how this game is played? Avril Nelson in a quarterback for Spokane, and on the first play of the game on offense, he runs into some pressure and throws that ball away. We'll bring up second down. The head coach for the Spokane Shock, Andy Olson, in his fourth season with Spokane, two consecutive years now in the playoffs, an overall record of 43 and 32, one and two all time in the playoffs. And Spokane, they. They've, they've done it all, mostly on offense, but like we talked about at the top of the broadcast, their defense the last few games has been pretty stout. And it's a reason why they're trying to make plays here through the playoffs. Second pass incomplete for Nelson. That ball was intended for number five, Anthony Amos, and a quickly it's third down for Spokane. A good, good pressure up the middle. A good pressure up the middle by Hawthorne. Didn't allow um, Nelson to really step into that throw there. And the front five for the Rattlers has just been nails all season with the way pressure they put on quarterbacks. And there's a little quick out to the tight end that is Gollington, and he is going to go all the way the other end for six. Nelson with a dump off to the tight end, Deverick Gollington. And one of the longest touchdowns you'll see out of a tight end ever in Arena League just happened, and Spokane jumps out in front, 6 nothing. Come on, Jared, that's a tight end? Technically. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, as big as he is, he was rolling like a tight end right there. He, those, he had some quick feet. 6'3", 335 pounds out of Texas Tech. And now in for the extra point, Taylor Rowan. The snap is down and the kick is good. So the Rattlers with some adversity here early to start the playoffs of 2015 as the shock strike first on a touchdown from Nelson to Gowlington. He's had to run in a, play, in a game in his life. I promise you, he hasn't run a sprint that long all season long. <laughs> wow. We'll dive into that play in a minute. First, a short kickoff off the foot of Rowan. It's Caught by Brown, and he slips and falls at the four-yard line and gets run over. Not sure what he was looking for on that play, but there was clearly nothing open. But let's go back to that touchdown pass. When you're the Mike linebacker and Tyree Glasper, and you're thinking quarterback every time, and then one of those guards slash tight ends dips out and runs a route, what are you supposed to do as a defense? How do you cover it up? Oh, I mean, you very rarely see it, and I think what's going to wind up happening is Coach Eward is going to cause some consternation on his, on his behalf because now he's got to account for that play. Really, the only guy that can cover that play is the Jack Backer, which means that you're going to open up some other things on the other side. I would look to see that play again where they fake that pass, draw the defense in, hit the slant on the backside or a little curl on the backside. That's Seth Joyner. I'm Jared Cohen here from downtown Phoenix on first down. Nick Davila connects with Chase Deadder on a skinny post from the slot, gain of 11, and a first down to the 15 for the Rattlers on their first play of this drive. It's going to be trips to the right of Davila. He's back to throw, and there's flags down. He connects with Windsor, but before Windsor can do anything with the ball, the officials blow it dead. Yeah, this, this is an important... This is an important series for the Rattlers right here. Um... They've got to put together a good drive, go down and get some points on the board. You know, the shock right now feel like, you know, they have the right to come in here and win this game. 
they feel like, hey, you know, we've got a shot because they drew first blood. I think it's really important for the Rattlers to put together a good drive right here and put some points on the board. After the false start, it's at second down, and that ball was partially tipped and was almost intercepted by Kevin McCullough. Instead, I think I think Chase Deadder thought that ball was going to get picked off. Instead, when it got to him, it hit him right in the chest and bounced off for an incompletion. Well, a lot of times when guys flash right in front of you, before the ball gets there, it kind of breaks your, your visual concentration on the ball. I, I think that the shock realized that they need to go to the short passing game to get Davila going. They've got to really be careful with that Jack Backer because he's reading the quarterback's eyes and breaking on the ball. Got to be careful. Davila connects with Kerry Reed over the middle for a little in route to get more manageable yardage on third down to about the 18-yard line, about an eight-yard gain. So instead of it being third and long, it's about third and seven here with six and a half minutes left here in the first quarter. And, and you mentioned it. So far in this drive, the, it's the dink and dunk passes that have been converted for Davila here early. It's everything else that hasn't been. Davila's hit from behind and sacked. Brought to the ground on the sack. It's number 11, Micah King. And we mentioned it. Spokane figured out a way to get to the quarterback the last time these two teams met. And because of it, Davila threw a season high, two interceptions in one game, and was sacked four times. Here he is, almost an interception that could have went to the house the other way on this drive, and now a sack. And it's fourth down. Well, when you watch the shock play, what they're essentially doing is they're going to give Davila one read. You know, you had a stop and go and a, and a go route on the same side on the other side, and he's waiting for the route to develop. It's too far down the field. They cannot get these guys blocked. Davila's going to throw this one down the field. Knocked away. Nice defensive play right there by number nine, Sergio Gilliam. And a turnover on downs for the second straight offensive possession for the Arizona Rattlers. Spokane takes over first and 10 from the Rattlers' 12-yard line. And the fans here are absolutely stunned. Hey, I'm stunned. I've seen this. I've seen this offense on many occasions throughout this year just really get it done. And they just look stymied right here. Completely stymied. You look at all the stats, and Spokane doesn't really jump off the page defensively, but they have figured it out over the last month of the season, and so far it's carried over to this game. On first down, Nelson hands it off to the fullback, Bryson Nelson who will gain about three yards, making it a inside, man, maybe about one yard, the only credit with one yard, so it'll be second down and nine with 4.50 left in the first quarter. So Spokane, who got a touchdown from their guard, Dobrik Gollington, last drive, now back on offense. Nelson connects! For a touchdown to 81, Nick Truesdale. 11 yard touchdown, and the Spokane Shock have opened up a two possession lead. Wow. This is really a shock, no pun intended. Um, as well as I've seen this defense play, you know, they stood up when they need to st stand up throughout this season. Um, I'm shocked. The fans are shocked. I'm sure the Rattlers coaching staff is shocked at this, at this start to this most important game. Taylor Rowan in on the extra point. Nailed the first one. Second one. Snap is good. Kick is through. 343 left here in the first quarter. And the shock shocking the crowd here in downtown Phoenix. They lead the Rattlers 14 to nothing. Because their offensive line is, is really struggling to give Davila time for the deeper route to, to develop. Everything has to be one, two, three, and out of his hands. Kick is away from Rowan. Played off the net by our Keith Brown. Try to make something more happen. He's tripped up again. What a special teams tackle right there by Bryson Nelson, the fullback, a shoestring tackle. And the Rattlers will stop, start inside their own five-yard line, first and ten. You know, playoff football evokes different things in different people, you know. Some guys really get up. Some guys... You know, the fear sets in. You know, when I look at the shock right now, they just look like they're playing with much more energy. 
They look like they're playing with much more confidence. And the Rattlers kind of look like, hey, you know, we're the defending champions, and you better respect us, you know. Davila on first and ten gets a miscommunication with Kerry Reed over the middle, and it's incomplete. Nick Davila, three of nine to start this game off. Doesn't have that same swag we've seen out of him over the last couple seasons. Well, I mean, hey, listen, when you get beat up a couple of times sitting in the pocket, then your internal clock starts to speed up. A little miscommunication, a little miscommunication going on, you know, with his wide receiver and, you know, an incompletion. He'll do a sweep to the outside to carry Reed and cutting off the edge right there for the shock is Micah King. Just a one-yard gain and another third down upcoming for the Rattlers. I tell you, I know that, you know, in this league that there's you, you don't run the ball a whole lot. If you run it two times a game, that's a whole lot. But it seems like the shock are just completely clued into their running game. Anything that they put out, they're already waiting for it. On third down, it's Davila from his own end zone. Connects over the middle to Rod Windsor across the 20-yard line to about the 23 for a Rattlers first down. First catch of the game for the touchdown machine, Rod Windsor. And that will help with the confidence for Nick Davila and company. That's big. Huge. First of all, you give, give yourself some breathing room. Second of all, get some confidence going for Nick Davila here. He's now 5 of 11. First catch of the game for Windsor. Davila sits back. Hits Chase the Adder. And he's got some space. Crosses the 10 down at the 5-yard line. A little improv route right there for Chase the Adder. And it gets the Rattlers deep into shock territory. See, now, now they're starting to implement these, these option routes, okay, where the, deep, the defenders seem to be sitting on the routes. They know they want to go to the short passing game. So now they're optioning away from where the defender is. If they could just continue to give Nick, Nick Dobler just a little more time, they're going to be able to capitalize on that all night long. No question about it. First and goal for the Rattlers. Davila sits back, has Deatter again in the back corner of the end zone. Touchdown, Rattlers! Davila connects to Chase Deatter on consecutive plays, and the Rattlers are on the board with 55 seconds left in the first quarter. See, right there, that's great protection. It giving him time, they're giving him time for the, for the route to develop. And really a blown coverage on the shock part. I mean, they were all three of them were up in bump coverage. And Chase Deata just ran right through him and, and wound up wide open in the left corner of the end zone. So now Alex and Dejas, a kicker, he filled in on short notice for Fabrizio Scotcha last week. Hit nine of nine on extra points, and he's one of one so far today in his second consecutive week. Rattlers cut the lead in half. Down. But hey, you know, when you've got five or six inches over most guys that you play against, and if you've got comparable speed and with the accuracy of Nick Diablo, you know, he's going to outbattle most of these younger, most, most of these smaller defensive backs for the football. That ball played off the net initially. I believe that was Anthony Amos. Misplayed it off the net, and he ends up just taking it into the board. Can. which is an automatic touchback, which referee Scott Campbell is explaining. So it'll be first and 10 shock from their own five-yard line. And the shock, you know, they gave up their first touchdown of the game, but uh, them on offense has been pretty stellar. Avril Nelson, 2 of 4, 45 yards and a touchdown. Two touchdowns, actually. And they take over first and 10, and they're all white unis. Nelson back to throw. He's in his own end zone. Final play of the first quarter. He's going to air it out. And it's incomplete into the first row of seats intended for Amos. Threw it into double coverage, but there is a flag down. So before we call it quits here for the first quarter, we'll go down to the field. That's interference. Number one, offense. Half the distance to the goal. Still first down. Time expired on the play with an accepted penalty. We'll have one untimed down. So we'll have one more play before the end of the quarter and nowhere near where that ball was thrown and a uh, pass interference called on Braylon Bell. And the players are starting to walk down the field thinking the quarter's over, but they don't realize what the official just told everyone. Yeah. Come on, active listening. Are you here? Active listening, folks. They either, they either not listening or they're really focused. <laughs> <laughs> it's either one or the other. 
The shot clearly dialed into this game, leading 14 to seven. Avril Nelson now two of, and actually with the penalty, he's still two of four. But he's got a little bit of an arm standing back there in the pocket. That was a nice, he had a nice touch on that ball. It was just not an easy play to make in a double coverage. Absolutely. So first down and about 12 if that, that play was half the distance. Nelson's back to throw, looking to a little hitch route to the outside to Braylon Bell, but it's knocked away by our Keith Brown. Incomplete, and that will now conclude the first quarter. The Rattlers in little kind of uncharted territory. Shock and the shock had their way in the first quarter. Out to an early 14-0 lead, but the Rattlers strike with their first points late in the first quarter, now trailing it 14-7. As we resume things here in the second quarter, Jared Cohen and Seth Joyner here on the call from downtown Phoenix. It is now second down and 12 for the Spokane Shock as Avril Nelson in at quarterback trying to keep this positive momentum going for Spokane. He's back to throw from his own end zone. He's in trouble, and he gets rid of the ball. They're calling it a live ball as a fumble. It's being fought for around the five-yard line. It looks like so badly that Kevin Guy wanted to jump on that <laughs> ball because it was right there in front of him. And I feel like Avril Nelson was trying to get rid of the ball and throw it, but they called it a fumble. And I think they, they might challenge this. Just not a smart, a smart play. It's not a smart play. Take the two-point safety, call it a day. Because if it's truly a turnover, now you just put the Rattlers in perfect position to tie this game up. Offense. The foul happened in the end zone. By rule, that is a safety. So there you go. They, they did it anyway. They, instead of getting rid of the ball, they call it in, in grounding in the end zone, which is a safety. So two points for the Rattlers. Hey, that's two safeties in consecutive weeks for this Rattlers defense. Hey, they turned up the pressure, got pressure when they really needed it. Got it When you got them backed up like that, that's when defensive linemen really start licking their chops. You know, because they, they always want a sack, but they really want a sack, a, a sack safety. That's what they really go after. But, I mean, the Rattlers defense has been doing this, you know, all season long. You know, just stepping up big where they really need to step up big. This is a major momentum shift for the Rattlers now all of a sudden. Now, okay, the offense has scored. The defense has put some points on the board and given possession back to the offense. Just like that, we're right back in this game again. And just like that, the Rattlers could be looking at their first lead of the game as it's now 14-9 to after the safety, and they'll take over on offense. And they, the Rattlers showed it last week. They could get points up in a hurry. They were up 22-0 in the first quarter against Portland, and there was still about five, six minutes left in the first quarter. They did all that damage in about five, six minutes. So this Rattlers team that went down and was down 14-0, they could make up those points in a hurry. Well, I don't think anybody on the Rattlers sideline was panicking when they were down by 14 points, understanding and knowing how quickly they can strike and how they can make plays in all three phases of the game. You know, this is evident. Now they're going to get the ball back here with an opportunity to either return this for a touchdown and take a two-point lead or give the offense good field position and let's move the ball down the field and go up and score a touchdown and go up by two anyway. And is this not another example of, again, everyone knows the Rattlers for their offense, but their defense setting a tone? in a game. Well, absolutely. I mean, I, I spoke to it earlier. It's just a, a major momentum shift. And a lot of times that comes from the defense or the special team side. Brown catches the ball from his end zone. He's kind of trapped in a corner, and he's going to be driven into the boards shy of the 15-yard line where Davila and company will take over on offense, and the Rattlers will try to get their second consecutive touchdown in offensive possessions. There is a flag down, though. We'll go down to the field. Offside, number 81. Kicking team, 10-yard penalty from the dead ball spot. Arizona's ball, first down. A 10-yard penalty, whoa. 10-yard wow. penalty on a special team's offsides. Hey, better field position. So that'll get the Rattlers all the way out to their own 24-yard line, just shy of midfield. And again, despite the early adversity, a touchdown here puts them out in front for the first time in this game, just underway here in the second quarter. One to the left, two to the right. 
for Davila with Chase Deatter in high motion. He's got a step downfield. Davila looking his way. Catch, touchdown! Chase Deatter had a step running from the slot in high motion and hauls it in for six. The Latin laser hits Chase for touchdown number two of the game. See, I'm telling you, he's a, he's a tough cover for smaller DBs because they don't expect him to have the type of speed that he has. But then he's got the size. I mean, he just ran right through, you know, the chuck that the defense, the defensive back tried to put on him. He was just full stride and act like the guy never even put his hands out. He just kept running. No question about it. Alex Zendejas in on the extra point. 20-week season, 18 games. Chase Deatter played in just 10 of them because of injuries on and off. But he's made it count. He had 14 touchdowns in the regular season and now two today. Zendejas' extra point is good. He's now 11 for 11 now in the last two games. And with 13-28 left in the second quarter, 16-14. Rattlers taking their first lead of the game. They're streaming Arizona Rattlers football. Yeah, for this football team. Now you got the fans into it. The mentality and the, and, and the thoughts of the Rattlers have all of a sudden shifted. And now the shock are wondering, you know, what they've gotten themselves into. Absolutely. Zendejas' kick is away, played off the net by Amos. And he tries to split some defenders, grabbed by about four different Rattlers around the five-yard line. They'll give him forward progress out to the seven, where Avril Nelson and the shock will try to regroup here on the road here in the first round of the playoffs. And you know, they haven't really had any long standing drives on offense. They had the one big play on the first possession, and then after the turnover on their second play, they had the 11 yard touchdown. So they haven't had long drives, but they've been able to make them count, except for that safety on the last drive. And there's a quick throw to the outside from Nelson to Sombrano, who spins around and gets out to across the 20 yard line to the 22. So a nice gain on first down from Nelson to Javen Sombrano. That looks like that looked like a blown coverage, but to go back to your point that their offense really hasn't done much, um, the question is, you know, can Coach Olsen now all of a sudden find some plays to get this team back into the game again? Okay, you, you got a trick play to the tight end. You got a blown coverage and a, and a pass, a long pass, another pass that, well, you get a turnover back here. You know, you're working on a very, very short field. Well, now they've got to go the distance, and the momentum has shifted. You know, what can what can the shot really come up with? On first down, they throw a screen to the outside to Amos. That gave them about three yards. It'll be second and seven for the shock. Here down 16-14 with just under 12 minutes left here in the first half. High motion man is Sombrano. They're going to turn around and throw it to the near side. That's Amos again, and the defense just smothers him into the boards. Might have lost a yard on the play. Credit Marquise Floyd with the tackle. That's great recognition by, by Floyd. I mean, even as they try to, to pull the, the tight end or the guard out on that play to get an extra blocker out there, he read it right away and was just all over it. So they try to set up a couple short screen plays on the last two on the last two tries at it and all of a sudden it's third and seven for the shock gonna have to make a play downfield they're gonna bunch formation and then a high motion man to the far side it's gonna has a man downfield that's Sombrano tries to hold in with one hand but can't incomplete Sombrano had a step on our Keith Brown and instead it's fourth down for the shock well, a little pump and go action on, on Floyd. Hey, this is the time for this defense, especially the front the front four, front five, front three. You know, now is the time for someone to step up and make a huge play and really slam the door on this first half. Fourth and seven, ten and a half minutes left in the half. Nelson to throw, looking in the middle of the field, post corner route to the back corner of the end zone. It's caught for a touchdown and crashing into the Rattlers bench. That's 81, Nick Truesdell, and it's a touchdown for the Shock. What a big time play wow. by Truesdale and the Shock retake the lead. On fourth down, no less. On fourth down, um, I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out where Michael McAdoo is. 
I mean, a situation like this, this is where, you know, we, we have him on the field really to get some pressure on the quarterback. But when the quarterback has that kind of time to throw a deep corner out, I mean, that's just too much time. They're not getting enough pressure on Nelson right now. Extra point is up and through for Rowan. 9.46 left here in the second quarter. Shock back out on top. They respond up 21-16. to That's Seth Joyner. I'm Jared Cohen. You're streaming Arizona Rattlers football. And it's 21-16 shock. They just keep battling back, taking their shots. You know, realistically, I mean, you look at this football team and they're like, hey, what do we have to lose? You know? It's true. They definitely have that mentality. 7-11 and 11 on the season. They're a three seed. They're the underdog. They're the road team playing the back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back defending champs. You know, it's we show up, and if we don't win, you know, it's probably what people thought we would do. If we win, though, we shock the world. And sometimes those can be the most dangerous football teams that, to play, teams that don't have anything to lose. You know, hey, it's a bonus if we win. If we don't, no, one, like you said, no one expected us to win anyway. You know, we're just going into our offseason. So the offense for the Rattlers takes over first and 10. It's going to be trips to the right of Davo. They swing it out quickly to Chase Deatter, picks up some speed, driven down hard across to the 15-yard line. He took a shot to the back at the end of that play by Mike McMillan, the safety, but still enough for a first down. And, man, it's been the Chase Deatter show here in the first half of the Rattlers' offense. Well, I, I tell you, Coach Guy must have seen something, must have realized that, you know, he's got a, a matchup issue over there with Deatter. Must be. Six catches, 87 yards, and two scores here in the first half. Dobble's going to air it out. He's got Kerry Reed downfield. He switches shoulders to try to haul it in and just misses it. He got crossed up as he's going downfield. He turns and switches shoulders at the last minute and almost hauls it in, but just goes through his hands, and it'll be second and ten. Not sure on that play whose fault it, it, it was. You know, the did Reed run the wrong route or did he had to throw, you know, the wrong way? Hard to tell. Hard to tell. Davila did throw it kind of to the open side of the field, but it wasn't the way Reed was initially looking. There's a deep out route connected from Davila to Windsor. Catch number two for Windsor on the day. And now a fresh set of downs for the Rattlers. They're moving the chains. You know, as, as well as the Adders played, I think Windsor is the – is the key. He is the linchpin. And this guy's averaging eight catches a game. And right now, that's his first reception. And we got seven, seven minutes, almost seven and a half minutes left in the first half. Yeah, there's no question about it. He will be a key piece going forward. Davila is just going to throw that one away in the direction of Michael Benson. It looks like I think they wanted to throw a halfback pass initially, and it was well covered by the shock. They had it read the whole way. This shock team's done their homework I'm on quite you. a few occasions on both sides of the ball. When the Rattlers have tried to run the ball and all their little quick screens and things like that that they like to run, the shock have just been all over it. You know, really the only success, success they've had is pushing the ball down the field in the short passing game. And there's going to be trips to the right. Nope. Kerry Reed will switch back to the other way to the near side. Davila to throw. Under pressure. Ball is knocked down. Batted down by 67, Terrence Taylor getting his hands up just in time. And it'll be third and 10 for the Rattlers. This offense just hasn't been able to get into that just routine flow. They've been able to make plays, but it just hasn't been as much of a flow that we're accustomed to see this offensive half. Well, it's just their dominance. You know, they just seem to be a little off today. Davila's back to throw. Five-step drop. Middle of the field. Caught by guess who? Chase the Adder. It's around the first down pylon. It's going to be enough for a first down to the 12-yard line of the shock territory. And the Rattlers are back in business first and 10. See, now he, he's got number 26. McMillan just on skates right here. He's not sure what he's supposed to do. He's run by him for one touchdown. He's beat him to the corner for another touchdown. So now he pushes up, forces him to sit down. Now he just turns around, sit down for the first down. Seven catches, 98 yards, and two scores for Chase Deatter in the first half. Davila throws a strike to Rod Windsor. Lunges forward. Touchdown, Rattlers! The Latin Laser hits the touchdown machine. 32 consecutive games. 
for Rod Windsor with a touchdown, and the Rattlers are back out on top. Smart play by Dobbley. You know, you can look at him here. You see him patting the ball. He really wants to go to the end zone with it, but he just smartly took what the defense gave him there and let Rod Windsor do the rest. 22-21, Rattlers 5-16 left here in the first half. And this one is going to be back and forth with the way these two teams are playing. The shot came out early. The Rattlers have responded. Alex and Dejas in now for the extra point. Snap is good from Boyd. The kick is through. Zendejas been money. Now 12 for 12 in his last two games for the Rattlers for extra points. In Phil and Dudio Fabrizio Scaccio with 5.02 left of the first half. 23 20. That means the winner of this game will be heading to Stockton to take on the Sabercats in round two for a shot at the Arena Bowl. Kick away from Zendejas. Played by Amos. He had some speed going to the outside. Knocked into the boards by Marquise Floyd. And the shock takeover on offense, first and 10 from their own 10. It does, it does look like this game is going to, just going to seesaw back and forth until one defense or the other makes that play that really breaks this thing wide open. Or one, deep, one offense or the other just quick strikes, bam, bam, hurry up and put some points on the board. Avril Nelson so far in this game. 6 of 10, 88 yards and 3 scores. He's been solid. And he throws over the middle on first down to, to Truesdale. And a first down. And it's been the Nick Truesdale who's really stood out. He's kind of the Chase Deadder of the shock. He's kind of their number 3 option, their big guy that runs a lot in the slot. And the two slot guys that run in high motion have been the biggest presences on offense well, so far. Ab absolutely. I mean, it's a tough cover, tough cover for the DB in the middle of the field. And the Jack having to adhere to the rules with staying in the box and not really getting the width that's necessary to help. They're going to run the ball on first Thanks down. As Nelson gains maybe a yard on the play. And Taj Hawthorne a little bit slow to get up. He was the one that made the stop. But Truesdale, 16 games, 80 catches, a little under 1,000 yards. He does lead them in touchdowns. But their number and one guy has been Anthony Amos all season. But Truesdale has been the one making the big plays. Hey, you know, when the number one guy is out, it's an opportunity for somebody else to establish themselves as number one. Avril Nelson back to throw. He's under pressure in the pocket. He's just going to get rid of it. And complete into the first row of seats. And now a big third down here upcoming for the Spokane Shock. That was a great change up in coverage running running that Jack linebacker out underneath underneath that stop route. They're on their own their Rattlers 20 yard line, third down and eight with 252 left here in the first half. I like to see the Rattlers do that a little more often. Just a little something to really confuse the quarterback in certain situations. We got some Brano in high motion. He catches it at the five yard line, dances down to the three, and a new fresh set of downs for Spokane. It's first and goal. They have just made plays when they have needed to every single time. And that was a great thrown ball by Nelson well, right I mean, out in front. And listen, you know, he's going through his reads and he knows, he, he, he understands what the defense is trying to do. I mean, there's no secrets with this football team. They've already played each other three times this year. So he knows where the open guy is going to be in certain situations. He's just taking advantage of his opportunity. Been really impressed with Nelson here in the first half. They hand it off to Nelson. The D-line is stout. Nelson only able to get one yard on the play. Great penetration by Hawthorne and company. And it'll be second and goal from the one. And you go back and look at this replay, and Antoz just does a great job of driving through the gap to take away that run. It's tough. That's the name of this game. You know, whoever can dominate the line of scrimmage is going to be the team that's going to win. Nelson's going to keep it himself. Lunges forward and is in Nelson for six. Avril Nelson with the quarterback keeper, and it's the shock that are back out in front, 27-23, with a minute 20 left in the first half. I am really, really impressed with Avril Nelson in this first half. 8 of 13, 124 yards, three touchdowns, and now a rushing touchdown to his resume for this first half. Wow. Again, 
The crowd is silent. Silent. Stunned. And they're going to let the uh, time go down to the one-minute timeout. They'll kick the extra point before we take a break here. It's Taylor Rowan in for the extra point to try to make this a five-point game. Snap is good. Kick is through. One minute left in the first half. Rattlers will try to get one more touchdown before halftime to maybe give them a lead. They're trailing 28-23 to the Shock. You're streaming Arizona Rattlers. Time the Rattlers have taken the lead. The Shock have had an answer. They've had an answer for everything. Obviously a great week of preparation as Rowan's kick is away. It's played off the net by Kerry Reed. Has some speed coming out of the end zone, driven down at about the five yard line. Nice open field tackle right there from Kevin McCullough. And Nick Dobble and company will try to get seven more before we go into halftime. I learned last week when there was 20 seconds on the clock to never say never no. with this offense. 50, it's, it's one of those things with the last minute of a half is really the equivalent of like six minutes <laughs> from the amount of time and the chess match it is. Absolutely. I mean, but they've got to convert and get a first down at least. You don't want to turn this ball back over and give give an opportunity for the shock to be back on the field. Davila on first down airs it out for Rod Windsor. Great coverage by their main lockdown corner, Richard Dodd Masters. Masters among the team leaders and tackles with 70 on the year and also has four interceptions, which also leads the team. And if you're, I mean, you could speak to this experience. If you're a road team on the playoffs and the opposing crowd is silent, it just got to fire you up that much more, oh, even though there's no sound. No doubt about it. You know full well that you're doing what you need to do. Davila hits Kerry Reed on a deep out route to the 20-yard line. It'll be enough for a Rattler's first down with 51 seconds left, and it stops the clock with him being driven into the boards. Yeah, you, you really know it's a great catch right here, too. You really know you're doing your job when you go into somebody else's backyard and, 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 and shut their mouth. Everyone's sitting in dismay right now at what's taking place here. And then, you know, as a football team, you know, you begin to get more and more confidence as the game goes on because you're winning, you're doing a good job at winning, and you're quieting the crowd down at the same time. Chase Deatter again from high motion, hit in stride by Davila, then also shakes the defender. Mc McCullough drives him down just short of the first down. It'll be second and one. Now into shock territory, 32 seconds left. The clock is, the clock is running. Trying to get a score before halftime. Are the Rattlers down by five? It's Deatter in high motion again. Davila is going to put some touch on it. To Windsor, it's out of play, but a flag is down at the end of the play in the direction of pass interference. Dodd Masters was with him stride for stride. Hey, I like the call, but I want to see this one again. <laughs> yeah. Pass interference, number three, defense. Ten-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic, first down. And that'll put him at the 11-yard line, first and 10, looking back at this replay. Oh, there it is. And it looks like as Windsor went to put his right arm up to catch it, Dodd Masters held that right arm as the ball was coming in. That's a nice little veteran move, you know, right there, but you got to be real close to the guy when you do that or you're going to get caught. So it's first down and 10 Rattlers from the Shock 11-yard line. 23 seconds left. And a miscommunication here. Whistle blown. Time out. Spokane. First and a half. 30 seconds in light. And they'll take, they'll take a timeout. Three take the lead. 29-28. That's huge going into the half. I mean, I know there's 19 seconds left, but it's huge for them to snatch the momentum back going in the locker room with a good feeling leading into the third quarter, the second half of this game. Terry Reed with his fourth catch of the game for 35 yards. That is being his first score. And now Alex Zendejas in on the extra point. Three for three so far in this game. Boyd controls the snap, and Dejas nails it through. 19 seconds left, as we'll keep it right here. 30 to 28. 
Rattlers on top, top of the shock. And how about a 23-point quarter for the Rattlers here in the second quarter? Wow. I mean, we, we know that they can score in bunches. You know, we just got to see the defense be able to stop in bunches like they've been doing throughout the course of the year. Or this game is going to come down to the last possession. When you look at it, the shock will take over on offense to start the second half. And there's still 19 seconds left. A lot to ask Arville Nelson and the shock offense, but you're playing with an opportunity here to take a lead and have the ball to start the second half, which is huge when you're in a winner go home in mentality. Well, I think when you're in a winner go home situation and you're on the road, you got to take all the chances to win the game. Because you know sooner or later, as, as good as the Rattler offense is, they're going to hit some consistency. As good as the defense is, they're going to they're going to figure something out in this game at some point in time. So you better try to stockpile as many points as you can while you can. Jared Cohen and Seth Joyner here from the Snake Pit. The Dayhoff kicks it away. It goes through the uprights, which means it'll be a touchback. And he keeps it in the net. How do you like that? Since Dejas has been that money kicking the ball, it goes through the uprights, and it gets stuck in the net. And I'm not really sure. Someone's going to have to climb up there to get it. Well, I, I, I guess if you need a 50-yard field goal, you know he's got the leg. You have no and, doubt about and it. And the accuracy. He has been, he has been on, the, on the money since the Rattlers brought him in on short notice last week for injured Fabrizio Scotia. And now Arville Nelson back in on offense with the shock, trying to make something happen late. They connect. It's complete. That's thrown to Javen Sombrano. And it's about enough for a first down. And the shock will call a timeout to stop the clock with nine seconds left. Gain of 11 on the play, first down for Spokane at the 16 yard line. I think on defense, you got to be smart like that. You know, you, you, you give up a little 10 yard stop, hey, give it up. That play took 10 seconds to run. One more like that, we've gone in at halftime. Just can't let them beat you deep. You can't give up anything. You can't bite on stutter and stopping goals. You just got to make that guy catch the ball in front of you and break up on it and make the tackle and go on in at halftime. And as you mentioned, just nine seconds left, 30 to 28, Rattlers on top of the shot. Arvel Nelson, 9 of 14, 135 yards and three scores. He's been throwing darts out there for the shock. We'll see what Coach Andy Olson draws up here right before halftime. And they added five seconds to the clock. Wow. So now 14 seconds before halftime. It didn't seem like that play lasted 10 seconds. Well, but there, was, there was a lot of fighting going on right before, you know, a little wrestling going on before he actually went down. So, I mean, it's conceivable that 10 seconds could have ran off the clock. Trips left of Nelson, ah. back to throw. There's a man deep, he's got a step, and it's intercepted by Jeremy Kellum at the pylon. Interception number 15 this season for safety. Jeremy Kellum, and with six seconds left, the offense Returns to the field. Wow. That's a heck of a play. And you saw it before it developed. <laughs> well, Javen Sombrano had a step. Oh, excuse me. That wasn't Sombrano. That was Anthony Amos. Had a step downfield. That's where Nelson was looking. And Kellum makes a play. Well, you know, they ran the switch, out, switch route. And I saw him running down the sideline. I'm like, that's a blown coverage. I mean, if he sits that route down, that's still a big gainer. But they went for all the marbles. And... You got a Kellum, that's a heck of a play by him to come off the hash from the middle of the field and get all the way over there and make that play. Big time play. Six seconds left. Davila and company back out on offense. And he's going to throw. He feels some pressure in his own end zone, so he's going to throw it into the first row of seats. Still two seconds left here before halftime. Michael Benson time. And, and, and take it in the... Take it in the in the locker room, get some oranges and get some some Gatorade, get ready for the second half. Do you think there's a team mom that has some orange slices yeah, back there for him? Maybe something's just... going on back there. It's got to be. <laughs> I'm with you. Just hand the ball off, call it a half. Saw some adversity, but still could go into halftime with a two-point lead. 
Davila has trips to the right. They're going to throw it. He dumps it off to Benson. He has it. He shakes the defender. Now a load that he is. It takes a lot to bring him down, but they finally bring him down at the 10-yard line as time expires for the first half. What a first half we have had. The Shock and the Rattlers bringing their A games here for round one of the playoffs. Winner goes on to San Jose. The Rattlers go into the locker room up 30-28. to 28. They will kick it off to start quarter number three. That's Seth Joyner. I'm Jared Cohen. Take a break for halftime. We'll be back with the second half action. You're streaming Arizona Rattlers football. In that first half, as we're getting ready to kick things away for the start of the second half. Zendejas boots that one away. Played off the net by Amos, off a of bounce. Takes it out of the end zone. Has some space now, going along the sidelines. And he's driven down across the 15, out to about the 17-yard line by Quinton Sims, where Arville Nelson and company will start things off for the second half. Some keys for this shock offense from your perspective after seeing this first half. Well, I just think they need to just keep doing what they're doing. You know, they're not afraid to go deep. They're not afraid to take advantage of the underneath stuff when it's there. You know, he's just making plays, Nelson that is. And um, if they can continue to do that, you know, they're going to make this a game right down to the end. Nelson will have two to the right, one to the left. High motion man is... Sombrano and it's overthrown over his head intended for him was Nelson I think that might have been a cross-up and an incompletion to start the second half for Nelson Yeah, just rushed it, you know, he's trying to throw it on time didn't get his feet set and just really overthrew it. He had him there They are at the 18 yard line to start this second half second and ten high motion man is Sombrano the same exact route, stops after about a hitch from the slot, makes the catch at about the first down marker. It'll be enough for a first down as he's driven down by Ben Wells of the Rattlers. And it was basically the same play. Well, they're going to run the same play because a lot of time you can't get that jack linebacker out underneath that. The defensive back has got to honor the goal route on that side. And if you don't get the jack linebacker out underneath that route, then they're going to have that all day long. So in situations where they just got to either, you know, move the chains or get some positive yards, they're just they're going back to that, and that opens up everything else. Tenth completion of the day for Nelson on first and ten after the 12-yard gain downfield. Truesdale makes a big-time play. No, they said he bobbled it as he hits the ground, and it's incomplete. Almost a big-time catch for Truesdale, but he couldn't haul it in as he hit the ground. Down. He was going out, going across the field, and was almost able to haul it in. Nelson does a fantastic job of hitting his receivers in stride. Well, he's got great antici anticipation. He knows where the routes are, where they're supposed to break. And it seems like their, their entire game plan is we're going to nickel and dime, nickel and dime, and then take our shot. We're going to nickel and dime, nickel and dime, and then take our shot. Flag on the play. Looks like a free play for the Shock. So Nelson's just going to throw it downfield. Our Keith Brown was there to try to pick it off. But good defense by the offensive player, Sombrano. But I think there's a penalty upcoming on the defense. I believe Dukes jumped off size there. We'll go down to the field. Size, number six, defense. Five-yard penalty, still second down. And you would be right. You know, when you're struggling defensively, this is the one thing you can't do. You can't, you can't give up five yards and give up any gifts. And a, a couple a couple changes here on defense after that penalty. Ben Wells checks out. Kerry Reed in at Jack Linebacker. And Marcus Pittman checks in for Cliff Dukes. So some in-drive substitutions. Nelson to the back of the end zone. Had a man open, but it's overthrown incomplete. Amos was downfield, and he had some space, but instead it's third down and five for Spokane. We've got 11.40 left here in the third quarter. And every time Spokane has stared third down in the face a bunch of times in this game and have been able to convert just about every single time. Some of those have been for touchdowns. Nelson. With Sembrano in high motion. He's looking Sembrano off the back shoulder. Great play by Jeremy Kellum to get in the way and knock it away at the last moment. And a fourth down and five upcoming for Spokane. Absolute great play. 
Just got in between the quarterback. He closed the window between the quarterback and the wide receiver. Had to throw the ball basically through him. And that's, a, that's another great throw by Nelson. I mean, the only window there was the back shoulder. He went there, and Kellum just made a great adjustment. Yep. Yep. Great play out here in the first round of the playoffs between Spokane and Arizona. There's a throw, knocked away. Nelson's pass broken up by guess who? Jeremy Kellum, and a turnover on downs for the Rattlers defense. It's a great stop. This could be the major momentum shift we've been waiting for because if, if the Rattlers can put some points on the board here, they can put some distance between them. Now they have the two-point advantage every time that they swap, swap touchdowns. And what can you say about Jeremy Kellum? We'll take a break. 10.43 left here in the third quarter. Rattlers offense out for the first time in the second half. You're streaming Arizona Rattlers football. 10.34 left in the third quarter. Rattlers offense out for the first time in the second half. Dobla to throw in the first play. There he is, Rod Windsor. Makes the catch across midfield to the shock 20-yard line. Kind of a quiet first half for Rod Windsor, even though he did have one touchdown. But he makes a play to start things off in this second half of the Rattlers offense. And you look at the switch that they made. They, they moved Windsor into the slot and moved Deatta on the outside to kind of get him more involved in this game. You know, not that they haven't been doing well with Deatta in the middle either, but you know, he's an integral part of what they do. They've got to figure out a way to get him the football as well. They'll hand it off to Benson, the bowling ball across the 15-yard line. Michael Benson to the 14. Just his second carry of the game. They were good. They were feeding him the rock quite a bit in that last game last week against Portland. Jared, I tell you, I, I realize that this is arena football and the name of the game is to put the ball in the air, but I would love to see them hand him the ball a little more often. I mean, that's five yards on first down. Yeah, that's the, he has two carries for nine yards. Last week, four and a half yards per carry. Dabala feeling the pressure. Has Chase Deanna open for a touchdown! Nick Dabala showing off his wheels a little bit, dancing away from pressure. And Chase Deanna, sneaky, gets away from the defense, open in the end zone, his third touchdown of the game. See, that's proof right there that you don't have to really scramble to be an effective quarterback. All you got to do is move the pocket a little bit and buy yourself some time. When you buy yourself time like that, you make it almost impossible for the defense to really cover guys that long. Somebody's going to break free. Chase Deatter, nine catches, 121 yards, and three scores for the Rattlers with 8.40 left here in the third quarter. Nick Zendejas in for the extra point. He remains money. And with 8.36 left in the third, 36-28, the Rattlers with their biggest lead of the game. Jared Cohen instead, Seth Joyner from the Snake Pit. You're streaming Arizona. The pressure shifts even, even more so on the shot to do something with this possession and the Rattlers defense to shut them down here. Zendejas' kick is good off the net. Marquise Floyd makes a hard special teams tackle on to Amos down at the three-yard line. And tough field position for Nelson in the shock as they get back out onto the field for offense. You get the sense basically since the start of the second quarter that the Rattlers are starting to do all those little things that have made them so successful the last few years. Well, you know, they didn't start off hot. They didn't start off, you know, with a lot of energy and a lot of, you know, passion. But like I said, at the out, at the outcast, these are the type of games where you really find out who you are and what you're made of. Because your season is basically Nelson hanging hits, in the balance. Nelson hits Sembrano. Nelson Across the middle, he cuts it back up field and gets all the way into Rattlers territory down at the eight yard line. Huge play on first down for the shot to respond after that Rattlers touchdown. Well, and they're, they're, they're proving that they're just not going anywhere. They're not going to go away. This is going to be a battle to the end. And you got to respect that. You got to love that if you're a fan of football. And this is the playoffs. Two teams battling here for the chance to take on San Jose next week. And Sombrano has had a fantastic game. Now five catches for 95 yards. Nelson to throw, airs it to the back of the end zone, and it's, is it caught? Nelson's pass. It's complete. Complete to Braylon Bell. Touchdown. 
caught by Braylon Bell, his first of the game. And a great throw to the back corner of the end zone by Arville Nelson. Wow. Two plays. It, wow. Two plays and a score for the shock offense after going down by nine, their biggest deficit of the game. Taylor Rowan in on the extra point. And the kick is through. It's obvious that this shock football team is just not moved by anything. You know, whether they're down or up, they just keep playing, keep pushing, keep going. They've got a Two defenses that come into this game playing really good football are going up against offenses that are just clicking right now. Hey, you know, sometimes, sometimes an offense just has your number on a particular day. Nothing you can do about it but just, you know, fight through it. Kerry Reed off the net. He has a step. Gets across the 10-yard line and is stood up. Nice tackle right there on special team by Anthony Amos. Kerry Reed got it out to the about the 11-yard line where Davila and company come out first and 10. And it's getting a little chippy now. Got to love that in addition to a close game. Absolutely love that. You know, that tells you, you know, that something's on the line. It means something to him. Absolutely. And you see the, the finish line is somewhat in sight with 6.15 left in the third here in the second half. Two to the right. It's going to be trips to the right with Kerry Reed in high motion. Davila throws a strike to Kerry Reed across the middle, across midfield and into the boards. Kerry Reed had some speed on that one. Taken down by Sergio Gilliam and a first down for the Rattlers. And on that play, it looks like there was no Richard Dodd Masters in the game, and he's still not in the game. No, I think he just lipped out on, on that play. On that play, so it looks like 23 Jeff Richards has checked in for him here on the near side, guarding Rod Windsor. Chase the adder in high motion. Windsor's go looking right over the top him. to Windsor, go and he right goes at right him. at him. Touchdown, Rattlers! Rod Windsor, touchdown number two of the game. Throws off the back shoulder to the DB that just checked into the game. And the Rattler is a two-play drive leading to a score. See, that's just great coach and great play call. And aware that their best defensive back is out of the game. Hey, let's go check his, let's go check his backup. Let's see if he can really play. And he had no idea where to look. Looks uh, the wrong way. By the time the ball got there, Rod Windsor already hauled it in for six. Well, you know, that back shoulder pass is the most difficult pass in all football to cover. No question. And that's now five catches for 78 yards and two scores for Windsor's. And Dejas' extra point is good. 4-43-35-4-41 left in the third. Offense is clicking for both teams. It's your turn, Spokane. You're streaming Arizona Rattlers football. Again, and maintain pace because the Rattlers' offense is on fire since the start of the second quarter. And Zendayas again <laughs> kicks it through the uprights on the kickoff. That's a touchback. He is so locked in that even on kickoffs, it's going through the uprights. Well, you know, I'm happy to see that for him because when they picked him up early in the year, he had a rough outing. I don't think he's, he's stayed around very long. That he was just the only game, yeah. Oh, absolutely. The former Ironwood High School Arizona Wildcat staying local, playing for the Rattlers. This is his third time in uniform. Like you said, first game was pretty shaky. Came out last week against Portland. It was nine for nine in extra points. Hasn't missed one yet today either. Nelson will throw it out quick. That's Bell, and it's, in, it's, it's a fumble. Bell dropped it. Did the Rattlers recover? There's a scrum on the ground around the eight yard line. Braylon Bell hauled in the catch. And as he was being hit, the ball came out. Recovered by Spokane, second down. So it looks like Bell was able to hold on to it. Ben Wells was all over it as well. Jeremy Kellum was the one that forced the fumble. What else, what else can you ask from Jeremy Kellum in this game? His, his veteran leadership, his playoff experience is shining through here tonight. Hey, that, that was almost a play that turned the tie for good. I mean, it, it, they just come up with that one. That's the one game-changing play that we're missing on either side for both of these teams tonight. Nelson's going to swing it out. That's Truesdell, and he's driven into the boards at about the nine-yard line. 
maybe across the 10 yard line to the 11 on second down with just over three minutes left in this third quarter. It'll be third down and four for Spokane. We'll be inside of three minutes when this play is snapped. 44-35, Rattlers on top of the shot. Arvel Nelson, 14 of 25 for an exact 200 yards. He throws, trying to run a post corner. Incomplete intended for Sombrano. Looked like, you know, we starting to get a little bit of push up front. Some of those, some of those quick routes that they're trying to run, we're starting to get some, some pressure up the middle, not allowing him to step into his throws. When he's not stepping into his throws, it's a tremendous loss of accuracy. Fourth down and four. The fans come to their feet here from U.S. Airways Center. Kevin Guy waving to the crowd saying to get on up. It's going to be tripped to the right of Arvel Nelson. Huge play. He's going to throw, and it's intercepted. Intercepted by Ben Wells. He's taken down at the one-yard line. He fumbled the ball. They're saying he's down at the one-yard line, picked off by Ben Wells. And there's that big play that you said that can turn the tides of this game. Nelson tries to force the ball, and Wells picks it off, almost returns it for six. First and goal for the one, at the one for the Rattlers. In every game, there's a game-altering, game-changing play. And this game has been close all along because the Rattlers couldn't make a play when they needed to make it. The shot couldn't make a play when they really needed to make it. And now the Rattlers step up at the most crucial time in this game and on fourth down and make a play that can completely turn the tide of this game and send them to San Jose next week. It seemed like the defense just took it to a whole other level on that drive, and because of it, they get a turnover. First and goal. They hand the ball off to Windsor, and there's a flag that blows the play dead before it starts. It's going to be false start. We'll go down to the field. Snap infraction, number 55, offense. Five-yard penalty, still first down. And it's Brennan Carvalho who with the snap infraction, just got a little anxious before the start of that play. He must have liked the play call. So instead of first and goal from the one, it'll be first and goal from the six now for the Rattlers. Six touchdown passes in this game for Nick Davila. Looking for seven now. Rod Windsor in high motion with trips to the left. Davila. Sets up, throws a strike to Rod Windsor, touchdown! With 102 left in the third quarter, Rod Windsor, touchdown number three, gives the Rattlers a 50 to 35 lead. Man, and you can see it. When the lefty just sets a pose and then throws a strike, you know that he's liking what he sees. Well, you know, he's waiting on the option route right here, and they drop coverage. You know, he's got all three guys running the option route, driving to your defender and option away from him. And he's got great pressure, so he, he's got great protection, I should say. Excuse me. So he knows that he's going to – one of those guys are going to free up. They're going to move away from the defender. Zendejas continues the streak. 51-35 as he nails the extra point. 21 seconds left in the third. You're streaming Arizona Rattlers football. And this one away, cut it off the net. Is the shock as Amos, and he runs into Michael McAdoo, who throws him to the ground at the 10-yard line. That looked like a little frustration. I haven't been able to get to the quarterback tonight, so I'm going to take it out on you. <laughs> and if he threw him to the ground any harder, he might have gone through the turf. Michael McAdoo, no question, showing some anger on that special teams play. And they called a 10-yard penalty. I, I don't know what the penalty is. He just grabbed him and threw him to the ground, but apparently that's a penalty. That pushes the shock out to the 20-yard line where the time runs out, and that'll end it here in the third quarter. We have played three to the fourth and final period. We go a trip to San Jose on the line. Rattlers on top of the shock. 51-35, to 35. Jared Cohen and Seth Joyner from downtown. Absolutely, what else can you do? They just got to go out and play football at this point. You're spot on. 
15 minutes left. Nelson on first down. He connects with Bell, who is still on his feet, gets out into Rattler's territory, down at about the 11-yard line, a big first play of the quarter for Spokane. And Bell has come in off the bench and made some nice plays for them. Even though he fumbled the last time he touched the ball, he also has a touchdown. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that was just great play design right there. Great play design. It just seems like every, every single time that they've got him by the throat, they figure out a way to get the, get the hands off and make a play and, and continue to make it interesting. There's no question. 19-yard gain on that play. Nelson with trips to his right. Throws towards the end zone. It's complete. Two plays and a touchdown. That one complete to Javen Sombrano. And the Spokane shock. They're not going out without a fight. They make it a 10-point game with 14-10 left. You know, the Rattlers look like on defense they're running some, some covers some coverages, some exotic coverages that they've never run before. You know, sometimes that can cause a lot of confusion. I mean, realize you got to change it up because the other team's got your game film. They see what you run and things of that nature. But in a crucial time, just do what you do best. So instead of an extra point, we're going for two. Trying to make it an eight-point game, a one-possession game with 13.38 left. Trips to the right. Nelson back to throw, pressure, too high for Bell, and they can't convert. So with 13.30 left here in the fourth quarter, it's a 10-point ball game. Shock do their job. 51-41, you're streaming Arizona Rattlers football. And now this game takes on a whole different dynamic because, you know, one turnover or a turnover on downs, now all of a sudden we're right back at three points again. Or, or, you know, single-digit lead. And Rowan kicks it away. Back to receive it is Kerry Reed. Catches it high before it hits a post. He's got some great blockers ahead of him, and now he turns on the Jets. Crosses midfield, driven into the boards. At about the shock 23-yard line credit. The special teams front of the Rattlers, Kerry Reed. There was not even a defender in sight until he hit about the 10-yard line. Well, they locked up on their blockers excellently here. It gave him some good, good space to give him really good field position here. A great field position for Nick Davila and company at the 23-yard line. First and 10 for Arizona, up by 10 with 13 minutes left here in the fourth. It's going to have trips to the right. Reed in high motion. Davila to throw. Look and read. Catches it at the 10. Trying to shake a defender. He can't, but he's down to the 10. First and 10 Rattlers. Now first and goal. They'll spot him at about the 9-yard line with forward progress. And a 13-yard gain on Kerry Reed's sixth catch of the game. And these offenses are efficient. I mean, the Rattlers scored on two plays. The Shock just scored on two plays. And now, after one play, the Rattlers are once again in striking distance. Deatter in high motion. They hand it off to Benson. Gets the edge. There's a flag down. He gets down around the five-yard line. But I think this might be an offensive penalty. We'll go down to Scott Campbell, the official. Looks like the penalty happened the opposite way of the direction that Benson was running. So I wasn't quite sure to make out what this is when we down to the field. Offside, number nine. Defense lined up in the neutral zone. Half the distance to the goal. Wow. Still first down. I, was, I thought for sure it was a Rattlers penalty because Coach Guy came unglued over there for a minute. So instead, it was Sergio Gilliam who is a defensive back. I'm, they must have had the numbers crossed up because there's no way a defensive, I mean, maybe because he, oh, he was up on the line, up on the line pre press coverage, so maybe you're right. Dobble to throw, a step, and it is almost intercepted. Kevin McCullough almost made a spectacular tip drill interception. And it'll be second down and goal from the five. And Kerry Reed, a little bit slow to get up at the end of that play. Quinton Sims will check in and make his first appearance. Yeah. 
And it'll be trips to the right of Davila on this play. It's Sims and Deadder on the line with Windsor in high motion. Davila looking Windsor, double coverage. Did he wow. just catch that ball? No, they're saying it's incomplete. He almost hauled that in with one hand and double coverage. As I'm sitting here filling out my post-game awards <laughs> ballot, that would have easily been the cutter's catch of the game or the Absolutely. AFL highlight of the game, but ultimately he's not able to hold on. And as we look at the replay, the boards kind of get in the way of seeing how that play ended up. But the official was all over it and calls it incomplete. Third down and goal from yep. the five. Windsor has made plays out of that high formation. Well, this is the this right here with Deadder in motion. Deadder is the one that Davila looks for, but it's knocked away. McMillan makes a nice play to knock it away from Deadder. Nick Davila had a word for Rod Windsor at the end of that play. It's like there might have been a miscommunication, and Davila, his first progression wasn't where he wanted it. Fourth and goal. This is a big opportunity here for the shock. Turnover on downs is the same as a turnover in any other way you can get it. Windsor in high motion. Davila to throw. Caught by Windsor, but I think this was one that's coming back. It looks like he made contact with McMillan, and I think they're going to... This gonna... one can go either way. It looks like they're calling it on the defense. Pass interference. Number 26. Defense. That penalty is declined. Touchdown, Rattlers. Rod Windsor, touchdown number four on the defensive penalty. And on fourth and goal, the Rattlers make a huge play to go up 57-41. And Alex and Dejas comes in for the extra point. And the kick is through. Alex and Dejas still has not missed one in two games. The Rattlers open up a 58 to 41 lead on Spokane. 919 left in this one. You're streaming Arizona Rattlers football. Come out with a victory. Well, again, I want to see at what point in time in this game, you know, being down by 17 points, the shock have continually fought back time and time and time again. At what point in this game do they get to to that point where they discontinue their fight? And Alex and Dejas continues to kick it through the uprights. That's a touchback. And it'll be first down and 10 from their own five is Spokane. Arvel Nelson, 16 of 29, 231 and five touchdowns. His leading receiver has been Javen Sombrano. Six catches for 106 yards and a touchdown. Nick Truesdale, Tr Truesdale has two touchdowns to lead the team. And they need to make plays and do it in a hurry. 8.55 left in this game. Nelson from the pocket, has time. And he'll just throw this one away, nothing downfield. Good coverage by Kellum and Marquise Floyd in the secondary. And it'll be second down and 10. Jared Cohen and Seth Joyner here from downtown Phoenix. Again, the winner heads to San Jose. Nelson is back to throw from his own end zone. He's just going to air it out deep. And it's overthrown into the second row of seats intended for Sambrano. Haven't seen them try to air it out like that in a while, but they take a shot, and it's third down. Uh, and, and that's dangerous, too, to, to, to take that that type of throw down the field where well, you you need points you know a missed thrown ball that gets turned over it's really game set and match and now you put yourself in a third and long situation let's see if they go for half of it to try to get it all right here trips to the right of nelson feeling the pressure connects all oh, through the hands of number five anthony amos the team's leading receiver had that ball and then some, but he started running before he hauled it in, and it's fourth down and ten. Got to look it all the way in. And he might have had room to run, too. Oh, that's a touchdown if he catches that ball. Another deep option route where he turns away from the defender. He catches that ball, he's still running. 
We got 7.20 left here in the fourth. 58-41 Rattlers, big fourth down and 10 upcoming for Spokane. Nelson is back to throw over the middle, incomplete. Oh, after a tip ball, it's incomplete. The ball was tipped. Sombrano almost was able to haul in the loose ball, but it falls to the ground. Turnover on downs for the Rattlers defense. So, you know, that's my issue with, you know, taking a shot. If you're going to take a shot, you need to take a shot where you got some room or take a shot on second down situation. But they wasted some downs early on trying to trying to get the, push the ball down the field, get some first downs, and move the chains, then take the shot once you got some room. So the Rattlers take over on offense. First and goal from the five-yard line. A chance to really try to put this one out of reach. Michael Benson with it. Bowls over McCullough and walks in for six. The bowling ball with his first touchdown of the game. He just trucks. Kevin McCullough, the only man in front of him, and it's a Rattler score. 280, 280 pounds. I don't think he even really looked like he wanted too much of that. I mean, I, I love this guy. I mean, I, I wish they – he's a weapon that I think that they can get a lot more mileage out of than they do. 64-41, Rattlers, 6-10 left in this one as Zendeja steps up for another extra point. And it's through. 6.02 left. 65-41. Jared Cohen and Seth Joyner from downtown Phoenix. You're streaming Arizona Rattlers football. Can 41. Huge. Zendejas kicks it away. It finally doesn't go through the uprights. It's played off the net by Dodd Masters, and he has nowhere to go. Taken down at the four-yard line where the shock offense will take over first and ten. And we were talking about it during the break. Nick Davila, even though he didn't throw a lot on that last drive, he starts the game 3 of 9, and he's now 23 of 37. Has really, really been on point since that first quarter ended. Well, eight touchdowns. I mean, we've been sitting here watching the game. It just looked like he's throwing eight touchdowns to you in this it's Kind in this of a quiet, game. quiet eight touchdowns. Nelson's going to air it out over the middle. It's complete. That's Sembrano once again across midfield to about the Rattlers 24 yard line. And Javen Sembrano continues to be way out in front as the leading receiver for Spokane here today. That's catch number seven. He's already over 100 yards in this game. Yeah, that, that crossing slot guy is, has been huge for them tonight. You know, like I said earlier, that, that's where the ball should be going instead of the deep ball. 22 yard gain on the play. And the pass is complete to Sombrano. Marquise Floyd hits him hard. And it looks like Antosh might have hit Nelson a little bit late to bring a flag. Marquise Floyd came downfield like a linebacker on that play. <laughs> Go down to the field. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Number 77, defense. 10 yards out at the end of the run. Automatic, first down. So a roughing the passer on Antaj Hawthorne gives the shock the ball all the way down to the 11-yard line. They need to score, and they need to do it in a hurry, down 65-41, now under five minutes left in this game. It's Truesdale in high motion, trips to the left. Nelson in trouble, he's gonna tuck it and run, and he's a big quarterback. He gets down to the five-yard line, makes something out of nothing there on first down. Well, you know, the defensive line is really starting to feast right here now. So if there's any hesitation, if guys aren't open right now on those quick those quick routes, he's going to start feeling some pressure. It'll be interesting to see how he reacts to it. Trips again to the left of Nelson. They set up a screen, and it's incomplete. They try to get it to the big fellow once again, Deverick Gallington. The last time they got him the ball, he ran for a 34-yard touchdown. That was on the first drive of the game. This one is incomplete. Yeah, a little pop pass to the tight end, I, I see that. But a tight end screen, I don't know if the big fellow could get the wheels going. Hey, man, don't, don't count out the wheels. <laughs> we saw him turn on the Jets for a 34-yard score in the yeah. first half. Yeah, but it's like a Mack truck. He was already moving when he caught it. <laughs> he got a head start. High motion man is Truesdell. Trips to the left of Nelson. Pump fakes, throws to the end zone. Back corner, is it complete? He goes over the wall. 
and incomplete. Valiant effort though for uh, Bell. Almost makes a big play, but it's incomplete. And it's fourth down and five for Spokane. And Bell is gonna feel that one tomorrow. Absolutely. I mean, great to give up your body. I mean, you wanna see that out of your young players, but wow. Braylon Bell out of Abilene Christian stands six foot six. He's been a presence in this game for Spokane. Trips to the left once again to Nelson. Steps up, throws, overthrows Sombrano, turnover on down. Nelson shows frustration at the end of that play. And for the second consecutive drives, the Rattlers defense forces a turnover on downs. They'll take over back on offense under three minutes left. After a short break, you're streaming Arizona Rattlers football. Take the same mentality on the road. Hey, what do we got to lose? We're the three-time, you know, defending champions. We got to go down here and show them why we're the three, three-time defending champions. Davila in the pocket on first down. Nothing there. Good coverage. Is feeling the pressure. Just gets rid of it. Incomplete. And 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 with no pressure. You know, you, you can have the pressure of realizing that you're trying to that you're trying to repeat well for Pete. But at the end of the day, who does everybody expect to win? You know, so when you're an underdog. San Jose this year. Well, absolutely. And, and what do you do? You take that as motivation. You think I can't do it. You're telling me that we're the underdog. And they're probably going to be hugely, you know, favored to win that game. That's motivation as a professional on any level. Rod Windsor with the catch. Still on his feet, dancing around. Dives forward just short of the 15-yard line. Just short of a first down. That's maybe the most underrated aspect of Rod Windsor. He's a big receiver. He has got great hands, but when he's got the ball in his hands, he can do a lot with it. Very agile. Very good at making people miss. So it'll be third down in about two with a minute 30 left in this game. They'll hand the ball off to Benson. And he just thumbles, thunders forward across the 20-yard line, more than enough for a first down. See, they're trying to humiliate him now. When, when you do that, for a defense, the most humiliating thing in the world is having a, a running back just run all over you like that. On I mean, third and short. Well, on any down. They yeah. just wedge him and just, you know, hey, we're going to run you over. We, you know we're coming, and we're just going to roll you over. The center, Cavrillo, did a good job to get out in front to start. And as we get to the one-minute timeout here, we've got one minute left from a trip to San Jose for the semifinals. The Rattlers on top of the Spokane Shock, 65-41, to 41, trying to drive this one home and setting the table for the matchup between the AFL's best rivalry, the Rattlers, against the Sabercats. Give us from your perspective, Seth, in your playing career, there had to have been a time. NFC East, you play a team two times during the year, and then you meet them in the playoffs, say it's the Cowboys. You play them twice during the year, and you I don't know if you lost to the Cowboys during your tenure, but imagine losing to a rival, and then you play them in the playoffs. You can't really match that type of energy, can you? Well, you can't, and it's a completely different game at the end of the day when you're talking about a regular season game. Davila's pass incomplete intended for Sims, and way after that play was over, Dodd Masters goes to the head of Sims, called for a flag, and now uh, he's getting into it with a fan in the stands. Wow. You know, Dodd Masterson, he's been chirping all, all game. All game. Get on your boss! <laughs> After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number three, defense. 10-yard penalty added from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Yeah, but, but you know, you can play against a team during the regular season, but the pro season is something completely different. Yeah. There's, there's different pressures that go along with it, and you've seen that you've seen that team so many times at the end of the day, you know, you watching film, you're strategizing matchups and things like that. It's the finality of the playoffs make all the difference in the world. 
you know, when you lose a game during the regular season, there's the notion that, hey, we, next week there's another game. We got a chance to come back and make this right. But now that we're into the playoffs, you lose a game, see you next year yep. is, is the mindset. So with that motivation, coaches, players, and everybody, you know, approach these playoff games in a markedly different manner. Situation going on the down on the field with the fan and uh, Richard Dodd Masters as that play is unfolded. Some securities had to run onto the field, but everyone collects themselves a little bit and we'll play football now. There's 56 <laughs> seconds left here in the fourth quarter. 65-41, Rattlers on top of the shock. You look at the two matchups as the guy that got into it with him just wow. walked right past us and has been kicked out of the game. Good moment for him. <laughs> San Jose had their way with the Rattlers both times out. The first meeting was here in Phoenix back on May 2nd, and the Spokane Shock just really just took it to the Rattlers, winning 56-34. to And then the last time they met in Spokane, it was kind of a back-and-forth game, and then San Jose just took it and ran with it and scored 27 unanswered points to close out the victory. Well... You know, last week's game, you know, was a game that, okay, let's see where they are after the drubbing. This week, you know, it'll be a gut check again because not only, you know, are they playing against a team that they haven't beaten, but they're playing against a team that's favored to win it all. Dobble to throw, completes it to Sims across the 10-yard line to about the 8. It'll be first and goal with 46 seconds left. And Spokane will call a timeout. Wow. And how fun is it going to be? You know, Maurice Purify, <laughs> the ra or former Rattler great, goes over to the dark side, joins San Jose, who's had a fantastic year. It'll be, it'll be bittersweet on both sides, you know, when you really stop and think about it, you know, depending on how how the separation went, whether he left because he wanted to leave or he left because he was ushered out the door. That has a lot to do with, you know, how he feels about how he feels about the Rattlers. And that decision, you know, basically tells us how they feel about him. Um, and they ultimately bring him in because they look at a guy that has crazy experience this time of year. Absolutely. You know, they already have Reggie Gray, one of the best receivers in the league. But it can't match the experience that Purify has had in the Arena Bowls the last several seasons. Absolutely. Davila back to throw. Back in the end zone, overthrows a man. That was Windsor, the intended receiver. And with 41 seconds left, it'll bring up second down. I tell you, you know, the mentality is so different in arena football, man. It's like 41 seconds, and every other... Every other football league we're taking, we're in victory formation. Yep. Coach Guy, he's trying to just, every single point that he can put on the board, he's trying to strike it up. Yeah, well, you can't take a knee in arena ball, so they have to drive forward. But they could just hand the ball up to Benson, Absolutely. maybe stumble forward for a few yards, like they do here, <laughs> to the five-yard line and just kind of let the clock do what it does. But at the same token, you got Spokane that continues to call a timeout, so Coach Guy's going to be like, all right. Yeah. We'll just put it in the end zone on the next play. Just asking for it. You're going to keep calling timeouts, and we'll just go ahead and punch it in, like you said. And one thing that's been huge, and it's going to be have to be huge again next week, Spokane, w when the game was won by the Shock in Spokane during the regular season, they got after Davila. First couple drives of the game on offense for the Rattlers, they were getting after Davila. They have not been able to do that the last three quarters, and because of it, the offense has just kind of picked their poison. Well, I promise you it'll be a major point of contention all week leading up into this next game. Because they got Francis Maka, who's one of the sack leaders for San Jose, uh, upcoming next week. Absolutely. I mean, you, I, we said from the onset, you've got to keep this guy upright. You know, he can't get pressured, you know, and he can't be in situations where he doesn't have time. Here, here he goes <laughs> right down here. Right on cue. Absolutely. James Ruffin, another one of the league leaders in sacks, comes in and sacks Davila. And the clock will stop at 31 seconds. You know, one of the main numbers that I was ready to throw out in this game, Summers and Ruffin, 
There's no foul on the play for defensive holding. The quarterback was being sacked. There's no positive yardage, so the clock will stop. Summers and Ruffin, and that's really the first time we've called Ruffin's name. We haven't called Summers' name at all. The two of them have combined for 24 sacks this season. Wow. That was Summers' first sack. No, excuse me, Ruffin's first sack of the game. Right. So that goes to our point of it's a notion in this game that helped Spokane last time out that really has not even been a point of interest so far in this game, and they, the Rattlers will want to continue that next week. Well, but sometimes it's not really about the sack. It's, it's, it's always been about the pressure. If you can create the pressure and the quarterback doesn't have time to step into the routes, that the, the passes that he wants to throw, or he's throwing off the wrong foot and balls are falling incomplete, I mean, oftentimes those are just as good as a sack. Now, from a player's perspective, a coach's perspective, you want the sack in the lost yardage, you know. But from a pure, a, a pure football standpoint, hey, if that quarterback can't be accurate by stepping into the ball, that's just as important to, you know, to me as well. A false start on the Rattlers moves him back five yards. Still 31 seconds left. Davila to throw. A quick bubble screen to Windsor. Still on his feet, driven in the boards at about the five-yard line. And now it's getting ugly. There's some things being said just about after every play, and now it's starting to break out a little bit into a skirmish. Well, you know, right there in the middle of it again, you'll see Dodd, Dodd Masters right there in the middle starting it up again. And I guess the Rattlers players have just had enough. And at the end of it, Dodd Masters goes and gives a hug to Quentin Sims. <laughs> I think he's kind of collected himself a little bit. Well, he's a little chatterbox. He's been at it all game long. <laughs> and he's exiting the field right now. There's 24 seconds left. The officials are are talking it over. A couple flags flew at the end of that play. As we're on the topic of defensive side of the ball, we've got two of the top defensive backs in the Arena League going to be going at it. First, we'll go down to the field, though. Scott Campbell, the referee, will diagnose what we just saw at the end of that last play. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number three, Spokane. That penalty is declined. Personal foul, number 67, Spokane. That penalty to be accepted, 67, has been disqualified. So the player disqualified is Terrence Taylor, the nose guard for Spokane. He was about to leave the game here in about 24 <laughs> seconds anyway, so. Just get an early shower. He just can jump into the showers a little bit earlier than everyone else. 65-41, Rattlers on top of the shock. But to my point, it's not very often a guy like Ken Fontanet of the Sabercats hauls in 12 interceptions in a season, and that doesn't lead the league. Jeremy Kellum's 14 does. Well, I mean, Jeremy Kellum's had a heck of a year, no doubt about it. The Rattlers, in fact, actually turned the ball over on down downs on that last play so the shock take over on offense and Nelson's first class pass on that play is incomplete but Kellum hauled in interception number 15 this year earlier in this game right and you know he's such a big big component a big key to everything they do you know I watched him early in the year and he kind of struggled at that safety position but he's found some continuity he's found some rhythm to you know all the He's found some rhythm to, to how this defense is supposed to be played, and he's he's had a big year. I mean, without them, without him this year, you know, I shudder to think, you know, what this secondary, you know, would, would, would really look like. On second down, the pass from Nelson to Truesdale is incomplete, brings up third down and 10 with 17 seconds left. It'll be Truesdale in high motion with trips to the left of Nelson. He's back to throw. He's going to put some air under it. Downfield, intended for Truesdale again, overthrown. Kellum was in the area on the coverage, and it's fourth down. And if the Rattlers get a turnover on downs here, not that it matters at this point, but it'll be three consecutive turnovers on downs on defense to close out this game. Well, but that's what they need. You know, you need, you need to create those turnovers on downs to give the offense the extra possessions without points being put on the board by the by the opposing team. Nelson to throw on fourth down, and that ball's tipped at the line of scrimmage, incomplete. Rattlers turn it over on downs on defense. 
Nine seconds left, and the Rattlers will put this one to bed here in just a few moments. Three turnovers on downs forced by the defense to close out this game and to create separation from the shot. Wow, Glasper with great push. Dukes get the, gets the hand up. Well, being able to create predictable situations, you know, now you can just turn those guys loose. Hey, go, go rush the passer without any worry about, you know, there being any kind of run. Now, the only way the clock keeps running is if they go forward, and they're at the one-yard line. So a touchdown is the only thing that keeps the clock moving, and that's what Michael Benson does. Is he in? Yes, he is. Touchdown, Michael Benson. With four seconds left. Wow. Second touchdown of the game for Benson. Hey, what can you do? They had to move forward a yard to move the clock. That's a touchdown, and it's number two for Benson. Absolutely. Just great leg drive. Two guys draped all over him. Just taking him for a ride. 71-41, Rattlers on top of the shock. They have blown this one open here in the fourth quarter. Wow, if I, if I took you back to the second quarter, could you have seen this outcome? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. The shock had everything going. They were well prepared. And the Rattlers call a, a timeout to, I guess, get some things in order before the extra point. But to, your, to the question that you posed, no, because Spokane looked like really the more prepared team as we started the second quarter. And they've been outscored... 41 to 13 in this second half. It's been a completely different game. Well, I think that first turnover on downs that the Rattlers had on defense was really the, the major shift in the game. Um, I think that's that's the one that really broke broke the shots back from the standpoint that they just knew that. Well, actually, the interception by Kellum yes. was the, was the, was the major momentum swinger, and now all of a sudden, for the first time they started to get the, fence, the, the sense or the feeling that they were really beginning to lose grip of this game. And again, a lot of credit. You, get, you give credit to an offense that puts up 72 points as Alex Sendejas hits that extra point, remains perfect in two consecutive games. You put the credit on an offense when you see that crooked number on the scoreboard, but this all went into effect when the defense, like you mentioned, Jeremy Callum, big interception at the pylon. Ben Wells, the interception, taking it back to the one-yard line, and then three consecutive turnovers on downs. It's the defense that's really forced the Rattlers to really create the separation. And as weird as it sounds, it looks to me like the defense is the catalyst for this football team. When and that they're... hasn't been the case over the last three years. Yeah. Yeah. It's been all about this Rattlers offense, and the defense, it's – the Rattlers are going to score, and then if the defense can come in and get a few stops, that's what's made the Rattlers so good. Hey, well, you know, every, every year is a different situation, a different set of circumstances. You know, they start the year off with questions at wide receiver. Um, the defense kind of found its way and really began to, to lead this football team. But I really think, you know, as far as the defense go, goes, that's how far the offense is going to be able to go. Because when they're getting stops, and they're turning the ball over for the defense. Hey, for the offense, rather, the, deep, the offense is able to capitalize and, and really swing the game in their favor. And the defense just feeds off that much, much more. Amos's return with five seconds left runs the clock out. Final score here from Auction Indian Community Field at U.S. Airways Center. The Rattlers moving on in the National Conference. 72-41, the win over the Spokane Shock. They'll play the San Jose Sabercats, who knocked off Portland yesterday in a big rematch. Spokane has won the first two of this season during the regular season, but now they meet in the playoffs. It has been Spokane that has been in the, or excuse me, San Jose, that has met the Rattlers in the semifinals each of the last few seasons. The Rattlers have prevailed in route to back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back Arena Bowl championships. Let's go down to the field. Vince Murata is with Kevin, Kevin Guy. Guy. Coach, slow start tonight, but after that slow start, that was a pretty dominant performance the rest of the way. Yeah, I thought our team played well for 60 minutes. You know, we started slower than we wanted to, but, uh, you know, defensively, we came out, set the tone. I thought they did a great job tonight.
Yeah, Nick with eight touchdown passes, the defense with seven stops, including the safety. You've got to be pretty happy about this performance going against San Jose next week. Yeah, I thought Nick played well tonight. You know, it was a total team effort, offense, defense, special teams. We got out of it what we wanted to. Well, I hope this is not the last time that I interview you on this field this year, Coach. So go take care of business against San Jose, and we'll get some help. We'll see you back here in a couple weeks. It's time to make a dash for the cash. Kevin Guy, the head coach of the Arizona Rattlers. Thanks to Vince Morano. That's Kevin Guy coming off the field, making a dash for the cash. And they've